The first thing that we've done in solving this question, and indeed something you should do in solving any projectile motion question, is to superimpose an xy axis on your picture. It's usually smartest to do so, so that the origin of your xy axis lies at the point where the projectile is fired. And if we do that, we can see that the initial y coordinate of the projectile would be at zero meters, since it begins at the origin. Now, in part A, the projectile lands over here at point A, and while we don't know the y-coordinate of that point, we can see from the picture that the final y-coordinate would be indicated by h. So we can say that y, the final y-coordinate, is equal to h meters. We also know the initial speed with which the projectile is launched. It is given right here as 42 meters per second. We know that it is launched at an angle of 60 degrees. So we can jot that down as well. We also know the time that it takes to reach point A it was 5.5 seconds. And finally, we know that in the vertical direction, the particle is under the influence of gravity. So the acceleration, or at least the magnitude of the acceleration, would be 9.8 meters per second squared. If you are wondering whether it should be negative or positive 9.8, you'll notice that in the projectile motion equations, the minus sign is built into the formula. So we're actually going to be using positive 9.8, but keep in mind that technically the acceleration is indeed negative, but that negative sign is included in the formula for us, basically. So actually, we can use this second equation right here to solve for the final y-coordinate, which is the height when the projectile lands at point A. So we'll be using that formula, and we'll just begin to plug in the known values. Remember, y was actually h in this part of the problem, minus the initial y-coordinate of 0 equals the initial speed of 42 meters per second times the sine of the launch angle of 60 degrees multiplied by time, which is the five and a half seconds, minus one half times the 9.8 meters per second squared times the time squared, so 5.5 seconds. And then don't forget to square it. You could pick up your calculator as long as it's in degree mode and type in the entire right-hand side of the equation. And when you do so, you should end up with 51.8 on the right side. The left side is just h because h minus 0, of course, is h. So you, again, have 51.8. And the unit here will be in meters because the seconds cancel out right there. And these seconds squared would also cancel out, leaving us with just meters in each term. So the final answer for part A is 51.8 meters. Now, in part B, we are asked to determine the speed of the stone just before impact, again, over here at point A. Now, in order to determine the speed, what we'll end up needing to know is the final velocity in the x direction, as well as the final velocity in the y direction. And then from those two values, we would basically use Pythagorean theorem to find the magnitude of the overall velocity, which would be the speed. So right now our goal becomes to find the final velocity in the x and the final velocity in the y, and then we'll do Pythagorean theorem to find the overall speed of the stone. Now, we know that the initial velocity that the projectile is launched at was the 42 meters per second at a 60 degree angle. Now, what we must keep in mind is the following. So, at the launch, we have this initial velocity of 42 meters per second, and then we basically can break that into the initial velocity in the x and the initial velocity in the y. Now, the initial velocity in the x direction would be the velocity times the cosine of the launch angle, which would be indicated right here. And so therefore, we can plug in the 42 meters per second times the cosine of 60 degrees. And when you type that into your calculator, you should end up with 21 meters per second.
Now we must remember that the acceleration in the x direction is zero meters per second squared because gravity doesn't act in the x or horizontal direction. So that means that if the initial velocity is 21 meters per second in the x direction, then the final velocity in the x direction is also 21 meters per second. So we're basically halfway to finding the speed. We will next want to figure out the final y velocity. And from projectile motion, we can use this equation to determine the final y velocity. So we would have the final y velocity equals the initial speed of 42 meters per second times the sine of the 60 degree angle minus 9.8 meters per second squared times the time of 5.5 seconds. So we'll punch that into our calculators. And when we do so, we will see that the final velocity in the y direction is negative 17.5 meters per second. So let's bring that down here, maybe rewrite it. And then now it's time to do Pythagorean theorem. Remember we said we're gonna have the final x velocity of 21, the final y velocity of negative 17.5, and then it is this speed right here that we are looking for. So we can say v squared is equal to 21 meters per second squared plus the negative 17.5 meters per second squared. On the right hand side, if you work that all out, you're gonna get about 748. That would be meters squared per second squared. And then you just take the square root on both sides and you end up with a speed of 27.4 meters per second. So this would be the correct answer to part B. Finally, moving on to part C, we're gonna repaste the picture, but this time we're looking for the maximum height that the projectile reaches. Now, importantly, at the maximum height, the final Y velocity will equal zero meters per second. Okay, so what we'll need to do is pick one of our projectile motion equations so that we can find that height h. And perhaps the most advantageous one to use will be this. So let's carry that one down below. So then it's just a matter of plugging in the known values. Remember, the initial y-coordinate is zero because it's launched at the origin. The final y-coordinate in this case will be capital H. We know g is 9.8 meters per second squared. The launch angle was 60 degrees. And the initial velocity, I believe, was 42 meters per second. So let's plug everything in. The final y velocity in this case is zero. This will equal the 42 meters per second times the sine of 60 degrees. That will be squared minus two times 9.8 meters per second squared times, let's move this over, the final y coordinate, which is capital H minus the initial y coordinate, which is zero. So of course we can actually just simplify this to just h. Why don't we pick up our calculators and work out the 42 sine of 60 squared. The zero squared of course is zero. So here you're gonna get 1323 meters squared per second squared minus multiply the two by 9.8. You get 19.6 meters per second squared times h you perhaps can actually add this term on both sides of the equation. If you do that, you'll get 19.6 meters per second squared times h equals the 1323 meters squared per second squared. And finally, to solve for h, we'll just divide both sides by this term here. So it'll cancel out and might as well write it here. So it's 19.6 meters per second squared. If you work that out, you end up with 67.5. And the units, let's see, the second squared cancel, and then meters squared divided by meters is just meters. So this would be the correct answer to part C.